those two specimens are worth millions to the bioweapons division, right? Now, if you're smart, we can both come out of this heroes and we will be set up for life. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movie idiots. Oh, honey, these people are dry. Now take care of them. They don't know what they're doing. Oh, I don't know anybody new. Well, sex is a great ah. way to meet them. Oh! For this list, we're looking at the biggest knuckleheads from films in the horror genre. Is there any one villain you hate in particular? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Mark Midsommar This folk horror flick is filled with quite a few unlikable characters, which certainly says something about the qualities of Mark. So, Sweden. Yeah. You're coming, right? I mean, I, I guess so. That's not completely ruining your guys' plans. Oh, no, 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 not at all. No. Regarded as the resident idiot of the group, Mark is the prototypical frat bro horror victim who constantly thinks about sex and gets the group into trouble through their stupid actions. You pissed on the ancestral tree. The tree? So what? Yes, yes. So what? I didn't know. For example, he foolishly urinates on the commune's ancestral tree, an act that elicits both incredible anger from the commune and in his eventual off-screen death. I'll be back, I guess. She's gonna show me. He also has a complete lack of empathy towards Danny and treats her poorly, often straight up ignoring her very presence. That is, when he's not actively voicing his hatred of her. That's not her again. Seriously? Oh my god. She needs a therapist, dude. She has a therapist. Number 9. Harry Cooper, Night of the Living Dead. Oh, you guys been down there. I could use some help up here. That's the cellar. It's the safest place. Some of Harry's stupidity can be excused through his stress, as his young daughter Karen was seriously ill from a zombie bite. But his wildly confrontational personality still makes him difficult to root for. I'm not going to take that kind of a chance when we got a safe place. We luck into a safe place, and you're telling us we got to risk our lives just because somebody might need help, huh? Harry can prove both annoyingly demanding and bossy, but most of Harry's unlikable behavior comes through in his cowardice. Harry is always looking out for number one, and it results in him both refusing to open the door for Ben and later attempting to steal his gun. Go ahead! Go ahead! You want to stay up here now? Helen, get this up. Get the now. Move! The latter act proves the last straw for Ben, as he shoots Harry in response. That said, he was right about the cellar. Number 8. Jeff, Cabin Fever Co-written and directed by Eli Roth, Cabin Fever is a grotesque little B-movie about a nasty, flesh-eating skin disease that infects the inhabitants of a remote cabin. What else were we going to do? First he gets his shit all over the car, then I don't want him touching me or you or anybody. After realizing that something is amiss, Jeff takes all the beer and bails on his friends, deciding instead to live by himself in the woods. He even abandons his scared girlfriend Marcy, who is left shaken and lonely over his complete abandonment. And while Jeff's selfish behavior did save his life, he is ultimately killed by the police when he's at his most reprehensible, while joyously celebrating his survival amidst the bodies of his friends. I knew it! I knew it! Needless to say, Jeff does not feel any semblance of survivor's guilt. Number 7. Gerald Hopkins, Gremlins It isn't Captain Clip-On! Played wonderfully by Judge Reinhold, Gerald Hopkins is the rival of Billy and a fellow employee at Kingston Falls Bank. Gerald is quite a selfish individual, and he's certainly not above irritating brown nosing and pettiness. He can be seen verbally pushing Billy around at Dory's Tavern, making mean and scornful comments while proudly claiming that he would have had Billy fired if he ran the bank. In a deleted scene, Gerald can even be seen apparently losing his mind and locking himself inside the bank vault. He's got to make an appointment with me now. Do you understand that? You've never understood the meaning of business. I've got bank examiners in the morning. I've got walls. He's better off in there. I'll come back from later. As it is, Gremlins doesn't show much of Gerald, and fans aren't shown this, but we're still given enough to get the gist of his personality anyway. Look, I'm a junior vice president at 23. By the time I'm 25, I'm gonna have Mr. Corbin's job. By the time I'm 30, I'll be a millionaire. Look at you. You're practically supporting your whole family. Number six, Judy, Sleepaway Camp. Judy, yo Judy. 
How you doing? All right. Released at the height of the slasher craze, Sleepaway Camp is essentially just another Friday the 13th with a massive twist ending. At the heart of the story is the deeply reserved Angela, who is sent to Camp Arawak during the summer. Hey, Angela. How come you never take showers when the rest of us do? While there, she is fiercely ridiculed by her bunkmate Judy. Later in the movie, Judy knowingly seduces Angela's love interest and proceeds to throw Angela in the lake after she discovers them together. Angela! <laughs> the bossy girl stereotype is widely prevalent throughout the horror genre, but no other character imbues the archetype quite as maliciously or as memorably as Judy. Excuse us, kids. <laughs> Lovely couple. I really hate that girl. Number five, Captain Henry Rhodes, Day of the Dead. George A. Romero really had a penchant for writing unlikable douchey characters. Maybe I should put him in quarantine. How about it, Steel? You call it, Captain. I'll build him a cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might not be a bad idea. Give some of the rest of us a shot at some loving. No one really comes out of Day of the Dead looking good, but the worst of them all is Captain Henry Rhodes. Rhodes leads the military group, which consists of the almost as unlikable Steele and Rickles. Let me... Excuse me! Is there food? I'm running this monkey farm now, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the f*** you're doing with my time! Rhodes is an incredibly difficult man from the start, as he bosses everyone around and either screams at the top of his lungs or threatens to kill people whenever things don't go his way. Shoot that woman or you are dead. But as unhinged as Rhodes is at the start, he grows ever more unstable throughout the film, eventually culminating in the first-degree murders of Logan and Fisher. He's one of those horror movie characters with absolutely zero redeeming qualities. Number four, Carter J. Burke, Aliens. It takes a special kind of scumbag to impregnate a child with an alien. Burke is that special kind of scumbag. Throughout much of Aliens, Burke is actually depicted as a pretty decent guy. I heard you're working in the cargo docks. That's right. Running loaders and forklifts, that yeah, sort of thing? so? Nothing. I think it's great that you're keeping busy. And I, I know it's the only thing that you could get. While he obviously doesn't fit in with the gung-ho soldiers and may come across as a little too corporate, he remains a likable enough man. That is, until Ripley figures out that Burke was trying to snag some alien specimens to sell his biological weapons. Look, those two specimens are worth millions to the bioweapons division, right? Now, if you're smart, we can both come out of as heroes and we will be set up for life. But that's not all. Burke then tries impregnating both Ripley and Newt with alien life via some face huggers that he releases into the medical lab. You know someone is really scummy when they come across worse than the aliens. This is so nuts. I mean, listen, listen to what you're saying. It's paranoid delusion. How, it's really sad. Number three, Mayor Larry Vaughn, Jaws. If there's one thing Mayor Vaughn loves more than cute sea-themed suits, it's tourist money. Look, fellas, let's be reasonable, huh? This is not the time or the place to perform some kind of a half-assed autopsy on a fish. And I am not going to stand here and see that thing cut open and see that little Kentner boy spill out all over the dock. Unfortunately, said tourist money comes at the expense of common sense, safety, and lives. Despite being told numerous times to close the beaches, Vaughn decides to keep them open so as not to dissuade the wealthy 4th of July tourists. Hey, Larry, if we make an effort today, we might be able to save August. August? <laughs> For Christ's sake, tomorrow's the 4th of July, and we will be open for business. It's going to be one of the best summers we've ever had. He remains annoyingly stubborn throughout much of the movie. And when the 4th of July eventually rolls around, a boater is killed by the shark, and police chief Martin Brody's son goes into shock. Well, at least he finally sees the error of his ways and decides to hire shark fisherman Quint, an act that would eventually lead to the destruction of the Great White. Sign it, Larry. Number two, Chris Hargensen and Billy Nolan. Carrie. Billy Nolan, huh? Billy Nolan. I'm oh, sorry, I can't hear you. Could you speak up? 
Billy Nolan. Carrie White enacts the horrible rampage at the end of this film, but it's Chris and Billy who instigate it. Watch it, you stupid shit. You're getting blood all over the place. <laughs> who are you calling a stupid shit? Chris is nothing but a spoiled and manipulative teen with zero redeeming qualities, and Billy is her equally malicious boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what you like about me, right? I know that. When Chris is banned from prom due to her bad behavior, she decides to get revenge by slaughtering pigs, draining their blood, and then dumping said blood all over Carrie at prom. It's this infamous event that instigates the prom incident, resulting in dozens of innocent deaths. Carrie is technically the villain of this story, but Chris and Billy do all they can to match her psychotic tendencies. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Steve Marcus, Dawn of the Dead Hey, I, I'm sorry. Excuse me. When, when you two fellas are done blowing each other, maybe Davy Crockett can tell us the deal here. Most people know Ty Burrell as the lovable goofball dad from Modern Family. But years before that, he played one of the biggest idiots in horror movie history. Hey, sweetheart, let me tell you something. You, uh, you have my permission. If I ever turn into one of those things, do me a favor, blow my f***ing head off. Oh yeah, you can count on that. Steve arrives with a large group of survivors and instantly makes himself a villain with his snide, heartless, and smart-alecky attitude. Yeah, you know, I would love to help, but, uh... The captain never works alongside his men. You guys, have a good one. What a total dick. His constant whining and cold antagonistic personality certainly do not help matters. Late in the movie, Steve nearly dooms the survivors by abandoning his guard duty and trapping them all inside a zombie-filled staircase. Hey, there you are! What the hell happened to you guys? Prick. In the end, Anna fulfills Steve's wish by shooting him in the head, and she looks quite pleased with herself in the process. Steve! I got him. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.